What's up everybody, Steven here with Neural DSP. And today I wanna to talk about Lamb of God. For me, there were really three bands that introduced me to the metal genre around 2004, 2005. I had listened to Slipknot, Metallica's Black Album, and a few 90s grunge and rock bands up until that point. But as far as the more extreme subgenres of metal, I really got hooked when I started listening to Strapping Young Lad, Opeth, and most of all, Lamb of God. Now, it's difficult to quantify the amount of impact that Lamb of God had on the new wave American heavy metal movement, but for me personally, it was the aggression, technicality, and honesty of the tracks, 11th Hour and Ruin, that really caught mine and probably so many others' attention. After listening to As the Palace is Burned, I quickly moved over to the recently released Ashes of the Wake with songs like Vigil, Omerta, and Laid to They seem to take all the best elements from bands like Testament, Megadeth, Metallica, Slayer, a little bit of Pantera, Swedish bands like At The Gates, and even hardcore and punk elements thanks to Randy Blythe. Now being new to the genre, I didn't really know any of this. I just knew that I wanted to start incorporating their sound and their playing into my own music. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of their gear choices so that way we have a good idea of where to start to build our own Lamb of God tone. When talking about their gear, Mark and Willie both have a number of signature guitars and staple amplifiers that they use. Mark has been with Jackson Guitars since around the mid-2000s with his signature Dominion guitar. It's a slightly modified version of the Jackson Sweet Tone Jazz R. As Mark puts it, it's an homage to the more rounder classic aesthetics than the more angular and pointy designs that are common to Jackson's line. And all these come with his signature DiMarzio passive humbucking pickups. Now, Willie has used Framus guitars in the past. His longtime go-to guitar is the ESP Eclipse model. He's been on their artist roster since about 2006 with several ESP and LTD signature models, including his earlier Camo models and his current Warbird series. His pickup selection has ranged from the Seymour Duncan Jeff Beck and Distortion humbuckers for his bridge pickup to the 59 for his neck pickup. His current choice, however, is his signature Fishman Fluence set. Now, when it comes to amps, Mark and Willie both have been firmly rooted in the Mesa Boogie camp for a long time. Willie has used the Roadster, the Mark IV, the Mark V, and most recently, the Triple Crown TC100, where Mark has used the Triple Rectifier of the Mark IV, the Mark V, and the Royal Atlantic RA100. While most of the internet agrees that Lamb of God uses 6L6 power tubes in their amps, I actually couldn't find any direct references from the band themselves. But when differentiating the two guitarists' tone, I think we can actually take Mark's own description into consideration. Since Mark considers himself the lead player, he describes his own tone as a little bit brighter, a little bit more mid-rangey, compared to Willie's more dark and more high-gain tones. So all of these tracks were recorded on my ESP LTD Eclipse, which has the active EMG humbucking 81s, 85s. So the first example is 512 off of their album Derm and Strang. Let's start with this lead track here. And the reason why I chose the Archetype Nolly third head and third cabinet for the track 512 is because their sound is a little bit more modern on the later albums, which the Archetype Nolly really reflects well on. So to start with this lead, I used the neck pickup on my ESP LTD, and I chose two dynamic 57 impulse responses, one a little bit further away and one right up against the speaker cone. Coming over to the head section, I left the gain the low at noon. I bumped up the mid and the highs, and I pulled up the master just a little bit to get a little bit more warmth out of the power tube section. And then I turned on the overdrive two just to get a little bit extra saturation, and I left everything at its default position and I pulled up the compressor with the smooth attack on. Coming over to the effects section, I pulled up the reverb mix and the decay just so I'd have a little bit more washed out tone on the lead guitar. So for the rhythm on the 512 track, I wanted to try and emulate more of Willie's style with a little higher gain, more saturated, darker tone. So 
So on the impulse responses, I went with the Dynamic 57 and the Ribbon 160 to kind of bring out a little bit more of that warmth. I also pulled over to the EQ section and bumped up 125 hertz just to give a little bit more of that bottom end. So in the head section, I pulled the gain down just slightly. I bumped up the mids. I left the highs at noon and pulled up the resonance and the master to kind of bring out, again, a little bit more of that warmth. The effects section, I went with the overdrive two pedal. I pulled the gain down a little bit, but I boosted the volume so that way I'd get a little bit more saturation out of the head section. And then I went ahead and boosted the treble and the bass just slightly. The next track is off of As the Palaces Burn, it's called Ruin. And I picked the Fortin Nameless for their earlier stuff because it's a little bit more throaty and aggressive kind of tone. So for the Ruin and the 11th Hour Tone, I went with the Dynamic 57 and the Dugout OM12 for the impulse responses. On the head, I pulled out the master volume control and pushed it up almost to max. Pulled down the presence, up the bass, the mid, and a little bit of the treble. I pulled back a little bit of the gain too because in the default, the gain is all the way up. And in the pedal section, I gave it just a little bit of saturation. I pulled down the level to almost noon as well as the tone almost at noon. So for this last example, I'm going with Redneck off of their album, Sacrament. For Redneck, I wanted to go with something with a little bit more silky of a gain structure, so I went with the Fortin NTS. So I actually did two different versions on Redneck. The first one's a simple setup. I actually used the Fortin NTS. On the impulse responses, I chose the Dynamic 57 and the Ribbon 160. On the head section, I boosted the girth, pulled down the grind, and I left gain uh, just a little bit above noon. On the tone stack, I pulled up the bass and the treble, and then I upped the depth and pulled down the presence just slightly. Again, for the pedal section, I went with the hex drive. I pulled up the tone as much as I could, gave it a little bit of drive and saturation, and then pulled the level back just a little bit past noon. Now, I call this one advanced because I'm using the Fortin NTS for the head, and I'm using the archetype Nolly for the impulse response section and the EQ. So let's start with the archetype Nolly first. I went with the third cabinet and used the Dynamic 57 for both impulse responses in different positions. And you can see on the EQ section, I made a couple of minor tweaks just to get my tone more in the ballpark. For the head section on the NTS, I actually pulled the grind down a little bit more, the girth up a little bit more just to give a bit more heft on the low end. I pulled up the bass and the treble, the depth and the presence just a little bit. And then in the pedal section, I went with the tone and drive knob at the noon position, as well as pulling back the level just a little bit so that way the gain wasn't as saturated in the head section. Thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, presets are in a link in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload our videos. Comment down below, let me know what artists or guitar players you want me to dial in next. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.